up, guys. You know, before you're seated, why don't you turn around and just say hi to somebody? Don't know if you're comfortable shaking hands, but you can give us one for saying hi.
stand when we want to worship the Lord this morning. If you're more comfortable being seated, you can be seated when you're comfortable. Let's worship the Lord together. We want to sing.
Precious Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning. Lord, we know that you are the great physician. You are the healer. You are the one who brings restoration. You are the one who provides God. You are everything. Lord, this morning we come to you for all that we need, Father. We bring it all before you. We lay it at your feet and we know that we don't need to do it on our own. We don't need to raise all the funds ourselves. We don't need to find sufficiency in ourselves. But Father, we find it in you. This morning, Lord, we pray that you would touch the hearts and the needs of your people. Father, there's those at home watching that aren't able to be here. Those in hospital beds that aren't able to be here. God, we know that you are with them. That you are around the world. You are with everyone that's in need. Father, you are here this morning. But Father, you are the omnipresent one. You're always with us. So, Father, we pray that for those who need to touch this morning, that you would meet their needs, that you are there with them. Father, let them know your presence and your peace this morning. In Jesus' precious name.
you, Lord. Lord, we declare the name of Jesus over every situation. Father, we know that your son, Jesus, is the one who brings hope. He's the one who brings life. And so this morning, we speak the name of Jesus over every situation, over any stronghold that would hold us. Father, you are the one who brings deliverance. Father, over every situation, you break the bondage and hold us down. And we worship you this morning because you are the Almighty. Father, we can rest in your presence. This morning we pray a blessing upon them as they go to their own service this morning. That they would know your presence. Father, as we sing these songs, that they would get it in their hearts. They would hide your word in their hearts. And that from a young age, that faith that is so strong in Jesus would be present. Father, that they would never know a day away from you. We pray that over our children. We pray that over our families. God, we ask that you would bring the wayward child home. In Jesus' precious name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. 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 You may be seated. The Kingdom Kids are heading over to their room. And Pastor Feller is coming to bring the word this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's nice to be in the presence of the Lord. He's here and he ministers to each one of us. Whatever your need is, and always go to Jesus. He'll take care of it. It's awesome to be able to walk with the Lord every day to know that He is looking at you. There's no better life than living for Jesus. And uh, He is with you. He's with you every day. Whatever your need is, you know He's there. And we want to uh, continue on our series in the book of James. And uh, our series has been triumphing over trials, over temptations, over false religion, triumphing over all kinds of things. And uh, this passage we're looking at today is uh, James chapter 3, verses 13 to 18. Triumphing with wisdom is what I have title of the sermon, and wisdom is a powerful, powerful thing that we need in our lives. Remember the story of King Solomon, when Solomon became king after David, and uh, I remember in a dream, the Lord came to Solomon and said, ask what you want, ask what you will. Isn't that a profound question from God to Solomon? Solomon didn't ask for a million dollars, whatever. Solomon asked for wisdom. He said uh, in 1 Kings 3, 9 and 10, So give your servant an understanding heart to judge your people, to discern between good and evil. For who is able to judge this great people of yours? It was pleasing in the sight of the Lord that Solomon asked for this thing. Not only do kings need wisdom, but you and I need wisdom today. In the day we're living, we need heavenly wisdom. We need that wisdom that comes from God. I uh, heard a story of an American missionary in Russia before uh, the wall came down, and when communism was powerful and strong, they, uh, Christians had to meet underground. And this group of Christians were in a house meeting, and they were uh, praying, and all of a sudden, three army fellows burst through the doors and had their machine guns. And they told them, all you Christians line up against the wall. And everybody got up and lined up there. And Chris, uh, the soldier said, okay, I'll give you 60 seconds to renounce Christ, to renounce this, uh, this stuff that you're into. Gather your things and get out of here. And they held their guns up. There was people that ran to their seats and got their stuff and left. 
there were true devoted Christians lined up against the wall, waiting to be executed and ushered into the presence of God. And as they were standing there, after everybody left, the soldiers went and locked the doors. And then they put their machine guns down and sat down saying, okay, now let's have church. We're believers and we want to make sure we're all believers in this house. That's wisdom from heaven. They came to worship the living God. They came knowing there were no spies in the camp that were going to report them. And uh, we need to hear the word of God. And I want us to turn in our Bibles to uh, James chapter 3. And starting with verse 13, we'll read to the end of the chapter. Who among you is wise and understanding? Let him show by his good behavior his deeds in the gentleness of wisdom. But if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your heart, do not be arrogant and so lie against the truth. This wisdom is not that which comes down from heaven, but is earthly, natural, and demonic. For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder in every evil thing. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, reasonable, full of mercy and good fruits, unwavering without hypocrisy. And the seed whose fruit is righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. I think the main truth in this passage of scripture is that a believer's wisdom is reflected in his walk and talk. Your wisdom, the believer's wisdom, is reflected in how you walk, what you do in life. And the scripture teaches us that the tongue should communicate wisdom. Our tongues should be communicating wisdom. James 3.13 says, Who among you is wise and understanding? Let him show by his good behavior, his deeds in the gentleness of wisdom. I think we need to examine ourselves and make sure we're being wise. Be being wise is being capable of using information properly. The reason for asking the question in this verse is because of verse 1. Remember verse 1 of this chapter? The Bible says, let not many of you become teachers, my brethren, knowing that as such we will incur a stricter judgment. So the idea here is a teacher should be wise and endued with knowledge, not proud or arrogant. Let him show out of a good conduct or behavior his works. And uh, the Greek word for conduct or behavior was translated in the King James Version as conversation. Old English, conversation meant the same as behavior. How you live. You, you live out what you believe. The challenge is, watch their walk before you listen to their talk. Make sure the person you're following is following Christ. Our teachers need to be followers of Jesus Christ. You show your ability to teach by the way you walk. Gentleness of wisdom or meekness of wisdom. A true teacher exhibits wisdom in connection with meekness or humility. Meekness is the op opposite of arrogance, haughtiness or pride. It's the ability to restrain your tongue and to quell your anger and be humble not just to exert authority because of your position. We need to walk in humility. We need to walk in wisdom. True wisdom from God is the real source of wisdom. An arrogant, self-asserting preacher or teacher or Christian 
fails to recognize the real source of wisdom. Arrogance should not be part of our life, but submission to God. Humble and teachable. Speech and wisdom are both liable to abuse, but a believer's wisdom is reflected in his or her walk. So the tongue should communicate wisdom. Our tongues are powerful tools, powerful uh, members in our body, and should communicate wisdom. But the tongue may communicate earthly wisdom. And that's what James is teaching us in this passage of Scripture, that the tongue may communicate earthly wisdom. And we see that in James uh, 3.14. But if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your heart, do not be arrogant and so lie against the truth. This wisdom is not that which comes down from heaven, but is earthly, natural, and demonic. For where jealousy and selfish ambition exists, there is disorder and every evil thing. We need to walk in humility, brothers and sisters. We need to walk in meekness. We need to walk in wisdom. Envy is painful or resentful awareness of an advantage enjoyed by another, joined with a desire to possess the same advantage. Bitter jealousy will destroy one's own testimony and hurt others as well. We have our spirits that we need to guard. How is our spirit as we live for Christ? Do we hurt people or do we lift them up? Our spirit, very important. The author of Hebrews in Hebrews 12 tells us, uh, verse 14 and 15, Pursue peace with all men and sanctification without which no one will see the Lord. Another word for sanctification would be holiness. See to it that no one comes short of the grace of God, that no root of bitterness bringing up causes trouble, and by it many may be defiled. If you have a root of bitterness inside, it will cause you to affect people negatively. It will work in you and through you to hurt people. And that should not be a believer. Proverbs 14.30 says, A sound heart is the life of the flesh, but envy and rottenness of the bones. But envy is the rottenness of bones. Strife and selfish ambition is not to be in the life of the believer. One who calls the name of Jesus Christ, one who follows Jesus Christ, should not have strife and ambition. And this is doing something for personal ends. It is not meekness, but pushes towards personal selfish goals. The attitude, an attitude like that, is presenting a contentious Christ. Christ is not contentious. Jesus Christ came to save us, to make us more like him, so that we walk in wisdom. Glory not, or do not be arrogant. This is building one's own support through bitter envying at the expense of another. Lie not, Scripture says here. If one says he believes in wisdom and knowledge, he should not lie against it in his conduct. I like what David Jeremiah says in his commentary. Selfish ambition leads to a party spirit or an attempt to elevate oneself. In order to be elevated, arrogant boasting must be utilized. Arrogant boasting inevitably leads to deceit and lying. We need to walk in wisdom. Wisdom is not worldly wisdom, but godly wisdom. James 3.15 says, This wisdom is not that which comes down from above, but is earthly, natural, demonic. 
In other words, it seeks not heavenly ends and interests, but those that are worldly. Gain rather than godliness is what it pursues. And when we walk, how do we walk? What's our life like? Remember the prodigal son. The prodigal son wanted his inheritance. He desired what he was owed. And he went out and blew it all. That's the wisdom that we're talking about as to earthly. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. And then it's not only earthly, but it's sensual. It is natural or is a wisdom that caters to the feelings of the old nature. Always looking after number one. What's in it for me? Jude 1 verse 17 to 19 says, But you, beloved, ought not ought to remember the words that were spoken beforehand by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, that they were saying to you, in the last times, there shall be mockers following, following after their own ungodly lusts. These are the ones who cause division, worldly-minded, devoid of the Spirit. When we walk in wisdom, we need to be filled with the Spirit of God. We need God's Spirit every day. We need to lean on Him. It's not in our own power, but it's in His power. <coughs> Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 7 says do not be wise in your own eyes fear the Lord and turn away from evil the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom because we walk after him we surrender to him we obey him but this wisdom is earthly, it's sensual, and it's devilish. The tongue was said to be set on fire of hell. This wisdom has the same origin. Wisdom that's earthly, wisdom that's sensual, wisdom that's demonic. And uh, Paul said to Timothy in chapter 4, verse 1, but the Spirit explicitly says that in the latter time some will fall away from the faith, paying attention to deceitful spirits and doctrines of demons. This is the age of the latter day. This is the age when we have this kind of devilish wisdom. And it's amazing when I listen to news stories, when I listen to the political agendas of different uh, people and situations, how they are so demonic in so many ways. Uh, telling outright lies that you know are lies. And they stand up like to tell the truth. It's demonic and we need to be on guard. The whole New Age movement and all the modern psychics and everyone else in that category seeking and following this demonic wisdom. Satan began this deception of false wisdom in the Garden of Eden when he enticed Eve to eat and be wise. He wasn't speaking for God. He was speaking for the devil. <coughs> and earthly, sensual, devilish, Answers to man's three spiritual foes, the world, the flesh, and the devil. The consequences of this wisdom, James 3.16 says, For where jealousy and selfish ambition exists, there is disorder in every evil thing. Confusion, which is a state of disorder, tumult, and no peace. Many congregations... Uh, face this disorder because there's two types of wisdom at work. 1 Corinthians 14, 33, Paul tells the Corinthian church, For God is not a God of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. We need the peace of God. And the way you get the peace of 
God is obey God, fear God, walk in the fear of the Lord, walk in the wisdom of God. Not in this earthly, worldly uh, wisdom. Isaiah 29, 14 says, Therefore, behold, I will once again deal marvelously with this people, wondrously marvelous, and the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the discernment of the discerning men shall be concealed. Worldly wisdom will be under the judgment. And worldly wisdom should not be part of the believer. We should not have any of that kind of wisdom in our lives. A believer's wisdom is reflected in his or her walk. First, the tongue should communicate wisdom, but many times the tongue communicates earthly wisdom. But thirdly, the tongue should communicate heavenly. And that's what James is bringing out here in verses 17 and 18. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, reasonable, full of mercy and good fruits, with unwavering, without hypocrisy. And the seed whose fruit is righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Amazing. First, the heavenly wisdom. First aspect of heavenly wisdom in this passage is purity. It's, first, it's pure. That is, it's clean from all earthly, sensual, or devilish things. As uh, Paul said in 1 Corinthians 2, verses 6 to 8, Yet we do not speak wisdom among those who are mature. Yet we do speak wisdom among those who are mature. A wisdom, however, not of this age, nor of the rulers of this age, who are passing away, but we speak God's wisdom in a mystery, the hidden wisdom, which God predestined before the age, ages to our glory, the wisdom which none of the rulers of the age has understood. For if they had understood it, they would not have crucified. Can you imagine? God Almighty became man and dwelt among mankind and was trying to show the people the way of God. What did the people do? They rose up and hollered, Crucify! They didn't want to have God's wisdom and so they crucified Jesus Christ. That's the wisdom of the world. But the wisdom of Christ is pure. There's none of that animosity, none of that wickedness. Wisdom is holy and clean. I remember quite a few years back when I was teaching the Bible college, I had this Bible college student, a young lady, Nikki, and she just came through a divorce. She came from the East, out here for Bible college and her husband's supposed to come with her but they broke up and she came out and in her prayer life she heard God telling her I'm going to be your provider I'm going to look after you I'm going to love you more than your husband and so she was struggling because she got a job at CIBC but they didn't give her many hours and she went to uh, the instant bank teller outside, you know, the bank, checked her balance, and she found out that her bank account was still connected to her husband's. And there was lots of money <laughs> in that account. And he had uh, he'd been so mean to her and forced, he kept the car, but she had to make payments. And so the temptation was, hey, I can get all that money now. But she had the voice of God come to her heart. And God said, I'm your provider. I'm your protector. I will watch over you. And so she decided the right thing was not to steal her husband's money, which was her money as well. But she decided, I'll leave that. 
trust God. And Nikki, the next few days, she was called into the management of the CIBC, and they said, you know, we've been rescheduling things, and we want to give you more hours. And Nikki was so happy. She said to us in the Bible college, she said, I know, I know if I didn't honor God and live pure, that I would not have had that meeting, would not have had all those hours provided for me. That's purity. She had a heart after God. And she knew God was her provider. We know God is our provider. God is the one who's going to look at us. And as you surrender to Him, you will see His hand of blessing. You will see His power. It's amazing how the Lord works. You cannot reap the harvest of righteousness that has not been sown. If purity does not precede peace, Earthly sexual wisdom has conquered. We need to be pure. And if we're pure, then we have the peace of God. Be pure in all your thoughts and all your actions. Be pure. And God will bless. Once the heart has been made pure, a state of peace should reign within. There'll be a desire to be at peace with others. But this should not be at the expense of purity. John 14, 27 says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. This wisdom that's from above is gentle. It's forbearing, making allowances for others and considerate. It's reasonable, not stubborn, easily persuaded to the good, not argumentative, teachable, easy to get along with, but not at the expense of purity. Full of mercy, ready to forgive anyone who has offended you. Good fruits are part of our life. And Galatians 5, 22 and 23 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, Peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. Without partiality, unwavering, no unjust distinctions. Without hypocrisy, not playing a role or pretending to be something you're not. Be straightforward and genuine. Bible tells us to walk in wisdom. Wisdom that produces good fruit. Wisdom that's displayed in your life. Mara and I went to uh, McDonald's just a couple of days ago. Or was it yesterday? Back in, in the past. <laughs> we went to McDonald's and uh, we were talking about the Roe versus Wade and all the controversy that's uh, happening in the States over this decision that's protecting babies. And uh, I, uh, when we got ready to go, there was an old fella that we've met in the restaurant quite a few times. And he was sitting behind us. I guess he was listening. And so I got up. While I got up, he said, uh, what do you think about this Roe versus Wade? And I said, I'm in favor of life. And so I praise God that babies aren't being killed. Those are babies in the womb. That's life. And I'm in favor of life, not abortion. He said, good for you. <laughs> so it was amazing. But wisdom that's from above is not afraid to stand up for the truth. Not afraid to stand up for the word of God. Not afraid to hold up the truth, the banner of life. We should not be ashamed of the truth of God. James 3.18 says, And the seed whose fruit is righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. The sower sows in peace. And the harvest of righteousness is gathered in peace. The 
conduct of righteousness will be that of peace. Psalm 8510 says, Loving kindness and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. The goal of heavenly wisdom is to produce righteousness <coughs> as the fruit within the church. And this is done only by being sown in peace by those making peace. A believer's wisdom is reflected in his or her walk. You have the wisdom that's from above. You will have a life that honors God. You will have a life that brings praise to the Lord. Christians should have a hunger for divine wisdom and knowledge. Devilish wisdom brings trouble to the congregation. When strife exists in the assembly, there's a devilish wisdom present. The Christian should show the qualities of divine wisdom. And many in the world do not understand divine wisdom. Because God speaks to us. God speaks to us in different situations. You hear his voice in your mind. Yes, it may not be out loud or vocal. But you who walk with God know the voice of God. We have been serving Christ for years. And I know God speaks to my heart. I know it. You know it. Well, there's this uh, minister of the Word of God who was walking by a gentleman one night in church. And he heard the voice of God in his heart. Tell that man, God wants to play baseball with him. What would you do if you heard that thought in your mind? God wants to play baseball with him. Tell him that. And the minister shook his hand and said, That's kind of weird. But the thought continued in his mind. Tell him God wants to play baseball with him. So, being a man of God, knowing God, and knowing the voice of God, he came up to him and he said, You know what? God told me he wants to play baseball with him. And the fellow fell on his knees, started crying. And through discussion, the minister found out that this boy was brought up by a father who the boy would say, Dad, let's go play ball. And the father said, I don't have time, son. And he continued, and then finally the father said, I don't have a baseball club. So that little boy saved his money for a year. And he bought this beautiful baseball glove for his dad for his birthday. And he brought the glove to the birthday party and gave it to his dad. So proud of this day. And the father took the glove and threw it down and said, What a foolish gift! Broke the heart of that little boy. God, he's the one who wants to play ball. God's the one who's there in every situation. You know, that earthly father was a fool. He hurt his son. He did not display the love of God. But God knows how to deal with broken hearts. And he spoke to that minister who was bold enough and listened to God enough that he was not afraid to say to him, God wants to play baseball with you. And he spoke to that young man. He knew there's a God in heaven who knows the heartaches that we walk with. That's the wisdom of God. When you know the voice of God and you obey, you will see the power of God. And that little boy in the heart of that young man ministered to by the true Lord. How is your life? Are you walking in wisdom? Are you walking in obedience to the Lord? Are you doing what God tells you to do? What seemed like a foolish statement to the minister was a loving word from a wise God. Heavenly wisdom listens to God. Triumph 
with wisdom by reflecting it in your walk and in your talk. Let your light shine forth for God, and you will be blessed by the Lord. Father, we thank you for your word. I pray that we would be people of heavenly wisdom, godly wisdom. Father, that we would walk in a manner that pleases you. Help us to be obedient believers, always pleasing to you. Lord, I pray if there's anyone here who had an earthly father that was hurtful, that did not treat them the right way, I pray that they would come to the true Father, the only Father who loves us with an everlasting love. Lord, I thank you that you're there for us in every situation, that you are a great Father. And those of us who are fathers, Lord, help us to be godly in our treatment of our children. We just commit our lives to you now, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And have a good Heavenly Father. And uh, may we use his wisdom as we try to parent and, and be spiritual parents to others within our congregation as well. We're going to close our service this morning with the song, Almighty, Most Holy God. Why don't you stand with me? And uh, let's just worship him one more time today.